If you are a farmer, then you know that last night was the beginning of the new year. So I want to say Happy New Year to everyone who understands agriculture and understands that spring is the new year of life that comes into play. And for those who understand the energetic aspect of it financially, spring is your new year of planting. You see, farmers know based on the almanac that this is the time to plant. From the new moon of last night, April 5th, until the full moon is when you get your planting done so that you can have a great season, a great harvest. So we are going to plant some seed because today I spent some time teaching some young men and women about financial alchemy, my Financially on Fire program. And we planted some seeds today that will help these people to grow. And I want to help you guys grow too. I'm not going to give you the whole program, but I'm going to give you a little bit right here on the personal responsibility. So what's up everybody, how you doing? This is your Coach Renz and I want to thank everybody for being here. I want to thank all my patrons. And if you find me for the first time, please hit that subscribe button on YouTube and follow me on Facebook and all other formats. But hit that subscribe button, I greatly appreciate it on the Coach Renz page. Definitely appreciate the subscribers there because we're growing a brand new page just for you, just for coaching, for finances, for life coaching, for meditation, spiritual coaching, every aspect, business coaching, leadership, changing the culture within your company, changing the culture within your home. We change the culture within ourselves. So we're going to talk a little bit today about the first parts that I was teaching uh, uh, earlier today about personal responsibility when it comes to your personal finances. Now, this is based on a program that I created called Financially on Fire. It is part, it is a subpart of the overall program of financial, financial alchemy. And coming soon, on my, if you are a person who is on my financial, financial, within my financial alchemy program, uh, this PowerPoint is going to be uploaded to the financial alchemy private page. Only members only can have access to that page, the financial alchemy page. We're going to upload this PowerPoint presentation and then I will add an entire video going through the process teaching this entire program when it's uploaded. So I look forward to that. It's going to happen within the next week or so. So if you're not a part of Financial Alchemy, you may want to join Financial Alchemy. There's already the DIY, Financial Alchemy DIY Credit Repair Kit that's already on that private page. There's other videos talking about investments and different types of investments, how things work. There's the financial repair letters that are on there. So, I mean, the credit repair letters that are on there. So it's a great page and a great group to be a part of. Plus, you get personal coaching from me based on what your credit needs, your financial needs, your desires are. But before we go too far, let me go ahead and take a few minutes of your time, and I appreciate you guys for being here, to go over these seeds of personal responsibility because I can talk to you about building your credit. I can talk to you about investing your money, but if you don't have these seeds in you, it's just like the old saying says that the seed of, of saving is not within you, then the seeds of wealth is not there either. So we got to get some of these things down. But before, So as we go through it, I want you to understand this. There is a huge wealth gap. We all know this. We know that the bottom 10%, bottom 90% of people in America make about $30,000 a year. That's the bottom 90. And then between the first, the, between the, that, that 10%, that first top 10%, the average income is 161,000. That's a big jump. An average of 30 to an average of 161,000. But from there, that 1% makes an average of $1 million, a little over $1 million. That's almost, that is a huge increase, a 10 times increase almost. And But from there, that, that smaller percentage of the 1%, $2.8 million, almost $3 million, three times the amount. And from there, that, that, that minimal, that zero one, that point zero one percent, 23 to 24 thousand million dollars is the average. 24 million from 2.8 million to 24 million. Oh my goodness. Some of you may say that that's not right. That's not fair. They lied, cheated, and killed, and steal, and everything else to get there. Can't say that for everybody. But what we got to do is worry about where you are. What percentage are you? 
Are you making that 54,000 so that you're bringing that average of 30? Are you making that 80,000? Are you making that 100,000? Are you making that 30? Are you making that 15? You see, we have to understand where we are first so that we can move forward. It is not for us to look at the wealth gap and be angry and not for us to look at the politicians and say, do something about it. Make it different. Make it change. We need you to give the money to everybody else so that everybody can have the money. Because as another saying says, is that if you took all the wealth in America, just use in America, you can do this anywhere in the world, took all the wealth in America and you spread it evenly amongst all the people, then within a short time frame, those who originally had the wealth will have it again. Why? Because it's a mindset. It's a way of being, a way of living, a way of working, a way of moving. It's a way of understanding. And we're going to get into some of those things. <clears throat> now, this wealth gap has consistently and continuously increased decade after decade. And if we're, you're not careful, it will continue to increase and you will find yourself at the bottom rung. What you want to do is change your cycle of success or cycle of failure. I'm skipping through some of my slides on here, but we're going to change our cycle of success and cycle of failure. The thing is that in the center is you. I know that's backwards for you, but it's okay. In the center is you. Your self-confidence, your childhood, your personal accomplishments, your understanding of your faith are things that are core to you. That helps you to determine your outcome in life, how you move, how you breathe, how you understand currency, how you understand business and money. All those things matter based on how you grew up and the people you grew up around. Your attitude and your beliefs are vital to your growth. If you're the type of person who believes that all rich people are evil, then you will never become rich because innately inside yourself, you feel like if you become rich, you will be evil. That you have to do evil things in order to become wealthy. And if that is your belief, that wealthy people are evil, that if you don't celebrate someone when they achieve success, it's easy to celebrate someone when they get a new job and it's not too far, for, far away from what you make. It's, it might be even easy to celebrate when you make 50 and one of your friends, one of your family members, they've worked and they've toiled and they've done what was necessary and now they're making $180,000 a year. They jumped into that 10%. And you may celebrate, but you also may feel like they owe you. They owe you. One gentleman today was talking about one of his friendships. And this person was his best friend. Been his best friend since they was four years old. He decided that he was going to go to college. He went to college. The other guy didn't. He decided he was going to get into engineering. <coughs> the other guy, he worked at a convenience store. He's worked in his career. Now he makes six figures, makes $120,000. 120, dollars it's kind of odd. It's like right on the money. $120,000. His friend only makes $30,000. Although they are best friends, his friend expects him to pay for everything. His friend always making comments like, you making the money, you should be able to pay for the lifts, pay for the Ubers. You're making the money, you should pay for the Braves tickets. You should pay for the concert ticket. You should pay for the meal because you're making all the money. And their friendship has turned into this thing where the one who makes 30 is freeloading off the other one. And there is a level of resentment there. For the one who makes 30 towards the one who makes 120. And that is re reverberating back to where now there is a feeling of being used and a feeling of resentment towards the one who makes 30. The friendship is in dire straits unless this gets corrected. But it's all about attitudes and belief. Now from attitudes and belief, we have our potential. You see, our potential is to become whatever it is we choose to, to become. Whatever our desires are, we can become it. There is nothing holding us back. Sure, there are mountains to climb. There are things to overcome. There are challenges that we all face. And in America, you don't face nowhere near the amount of challenges that someone in what's called a third world nation will have to overcome. You're not in a situation where in order to get an education, in order to go to school, you have to have a uniform. Otherwise, you cannot go to school. Imagine people in that situation. 
Their potential is being stifled. But if you're in a country that does not have that, you have the opportunity. If you have access to the internet, you have the opportunity to become greater than who you are right now. The sums of your parts can add up to greatness because you have potential. But then what is your actions? What are your actions? What steps do you take? How well do you execute? Are you spending more money than you have, than you earn? We're going to talk about that a little bit later as well. Are, 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 are you being resentful towards other people? Are you binging every weekend? You're binging on TV. You're binging on Hulu and Netflix. You're watching. I got I to gotta catch all my shows. I got I to gotta catch. I got to watch the whole last season of Game of Thrones because the new season of Game of Thrones is about to come on. I'm not saying you can't watch movies, you can't have your television show. I am not saying you cannot have your leisure. I love my leisure. But what I am saying is that if you have the desire to reach a certain height financially, then some of these things over here, you may have to give up. You may have to use them in moderation. You may have to remove people from your life. And these actions show up. They show up in your results. The results that you have in your life right now is based on the actions that you took in the past. Your past actions have brought up, brought you to your present. And if you're not mindful, your present action will bring you to a future that you do not desire to have, but you're headed down that path. Unless we started making, unless you start making some changes to, from your cycle, then you will continue to rotate because those results will give you a new attitude and belief. Either they're going to give you a new attitude and belief that pushes your potential to have greater actions, to give you greater results, that give you an attitude to push your potential to have greater actions, to give you better results. Or you're going to have an attitude that stifles your potential, that lessens your actions or give you the wrong actions which give you an undesirable result, which then changes your attitude to far, far worse and your attitude towards negativity, which stifles even more of your potential and then gives you lesser action and give you poor results. And you continue that cycle. The cycle is the same. The cycle is the same. Your perspective on the cycle is, going to, is what's going to determine your outcome. So you have to ask yourself the question, what's the outcome? What is your outcome? Because no one else can take this responsibility other than you. What is your outcome? Is your outcome to make $80,000? And, 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 and the reason why we use a number like 80 is because in general, there's a certain lifestyle you can live based on the amount of money you make. There are certain neighborhoods that if, if you require, like, like when I moved from Florida, from Brandon, Florida to Atlanta, I require my children to be in a certain type of school district. So when I looked around at all the school districts in the side of Atlanta that I wanted to live in, I knew that I needed to make a certain amount of money to be able to live in those communities. Not because, well, because the housing costs a certain amount of money. The housing costs a certain amount. You know? And because the housing was a certain amount, I know I needed to make a certain amount of money in order to live in that type of housing. When I was offered an opportunity to, um, to start a new sales team up in Manhattan, New York, and when I looked at the breakdown, coming from Tampa, Florida, in order to have the same lifestyle, how much money did I need to make? So when, I, when we had our discussions about salary, I knew what type of salary I needed to make in order to have the same lifestyle, have my kids in the same type schools, to be able to live the way that I lived in, 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 in Brandon, Florida. So I, had, I knew where my starting, starting point was in order to do so, in order to do so. So what is your desired outcome? So, and, and, and so you have to think about, in order to live a certain life, how much money do I need? I know, I've told you guys many times before, before there's a young lady. She only makes $40,000. Have never made more than $40,000 in her life, but it's enough money for her to travel the world the way she has. She's on her fourth passport the last time I spoke to her. So by now she's probably on her fifth passport. All right. But she's been able over these years, the way she works her money to fulfill her outcome, which is world traveling. She stamps, 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 stamps that passport to death. 
But she's been able to do that based on the amount of money she makes. And she travels how she wants to travel. She may not be staying in the $1,000 a night resort suites, but she's traveling in a way that's comfortable for her. So you have to determine what your outcome is. How do you want to live your life? How do you want your day-to-day -to, -day to be? How, what type of thing, what type of house you want to be in? Or is it even a house? I could be a house, I could do a condo. It depends. Well, I have my motorcycle, so I need a garage. But <laughs> I need a house. So, uh, what kind of house? How much is that going to cost? What type of neighborhood? What area of town? How much traveling do I want to do? Where do I want to travel? How do I want to travel? Uh, as my children are growing into adulthood, how, what, what do I want to have in place for them? What do I want to be able to come? And if they have an emergency, do I want to be able to back them up? These types of things you have to have in mind for what your outcome is. How you're going to leave your senior years. I'm 47 years old. 47. I have a five-year plan of where I'm going to be in five years. But I also have a plan of knowing at what age do I really, really want to spend most of my time in my leisure, but still some of my time working. And that work will be to continue to teach and coach. That's it. I will have turned the other businesses over to my children, the other properties to my children, grandchildren, whomever, and I am teaching, I am lecturing, I am talking, I'm traveling the world, lecturing. So I know what my outcome is, reverse engineer it. You know your outcome, start to reverse engineer it. Put everything in place in order to do what it is you want your outcome to be. Personal responsibility is the key. What do you fear? What is it that you're afraid of? Some people are afraid to succeed because of the people that they are leave behind and worrying and being concerned about them. Some people are afraid to succeed because they know the energy it took to succeed may take even more energy to maintain it. There are all kinds of reasons and all kinds of fears that people have inside themselves. So this is why when you work with me, when we talk about meditation, we talk about unblocking that foundational chakra, which is blocked by fear so that you can leave that fear in its proper place. Is it something that I, you know, forget and run? Or is it something that I face and fight? You know, which one is it? Which one is it? And we, de we determine that. But we do not let the fear control us. And then, are you building wealth for the year that you're in? Are you building wealth for the year that you're in? Are you establishing your career path for the year that you're in and what we're moving into? Many people are stuck in careers where they feel like this is what I do. And they can see that technology is changing those things. Technology is changing. I was recently having a conversation with um, someone and they asked an uh, interesting question. We were talking about ride share, the ride share companies. And they were asking like, are there still taxis? Are there still taxis? Yes, there are still taxis, but they're, they're becoming fewer and fewer. So is it for the taxi driver to get upset or for the taxi driver to move with innovation and technology? The hotel industry, Airbnb is hurting the hotel industry. Do they start serving, they, do they start allowing their hotels to be in an Airbnb type situation? Or do they maintain what they're doing? Do they, watch, do they reorganize and say, well, we're going to be more of a conference center. Our hotels must be more conference center oriented. Or do they only focus on being at the side of the highway to get travelers? Or do we go into the downtown areas so that we're closer to the venues that conference people want to be at, that tourists want to be at? How do we combat this? How do we change our mode of operation? Do we change our hotels? When we build a new hotel, do we make them into suites with kitchenettes now so that we can attract those people who go to Airbnbs for that purpose? What do we do? How do we change the fire code so that we can allow people to do that? How do we do that? How do we make that happen? How do we change with society? So are you building wealth in the year that you're in? And be mindful. Do not get caught up in every wealth building scheme and scam that comes along. You got to be mindful of all those things. Otherwise, you'll find yourself with a hole in your pocket. And every time you put money in it, it just falls out. You keep walking with that hole in your pocket and your money just keeps falling out with every step. <clears throat> and so you also have to ask yourself, what season is it? What season are you in? This is the planting season. The almanacs are telling you it's time for you to plant. It's time for you to plant during the growing moon. Yes, the almanacs were very astrological. 
but they were right. You plant during this season right now. So they're telling you that. Are you going to take the responsibility to, cre uh, to, to utilize the season? But here's the beauty. Because we are man, because we have the ability of reasoning, we can create a planting season. We can create those seasons at all times. When I teach people about sales, a competition in sales is here's a person who's a senior salesperson. Here's a person who's a junior salesperson. This person can make $1,000 off 10 calls, whereas this person makes $1,000 in commission off 100 calls. So if there's a competition, can this person over here, can the junior beat the senior? Yes, they can. The senior may only make 20 calls and their commission comes in at $2,000. Well, this person makes 500 calls and their commission comes in at $500,000. I mean $5,000. So therefore, the junior wins. They created their own season. They called home and they said, they said, look, husband, wife, uh, I'm not going to be coming home at dinner time. I'm, I'm in the middle of creating a season for myself. I'm in the middle of a competition with myself and those who I work with. And I got to create a season. And in order to create that season, then I got to plant more seeds. You see, I'm a junior at this. So I, I can't just make you know, 20 phone calls or 50 phone calls. I got to make 500 phone calls. So I got to create a season for myself. Now, I need you to give me these next few weeks to allow me to create this season for myself. If you don't have that phone call that you're making home, then you're in the mirror saying, look, hey, Coach Renz, uh, I'm looking at you, Lorenzo, and, and, and it's time for you to, to grow more. So what I wanted to do, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to ask you, I'm going to tell you rather, I'm going to tell you that, that we're going to work you know, an extra four hours every day to create a season. We're going to work an extra four hours a day to plant seeds so that we can have a harvest later on. We're going to work this way. We're going to put it in so that we can create a season. So although we can ask what season is, it's the new year, happy new year. You can always create your own season. In the dead of winter, you can create a spring. In the dead of winter. But guess whose responsibility that is? Yours. It is all your responsibility. It is all on you, not for anyone else. <clears throat> so we have to understand the game that the rich people play. When you understand the game that the rich people play, then you can move better. And I'm going way longer on this video than I intended, but it's all right. But we're still going to get to the meat of it. We're going to get to the meat of it. But I wanted you guys to have this part. The game that rich people play is that they have knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. Knowledge, wisdom, and understanding throughout history has always been the key to success. Right? And that they have systems and they execute. They understand the system of money in, the, in today's world. They understand the system of success in today's world. And then they execute on that system. If you are a business owner, if you're into marketing and you're not using that telephone device as your primary marketing key because most people's attention is on that phone, there is on that phone is scrolling through social media is on that phone It's through apps It's on that phone. If you're focused on TV ads, radio ads, but knowing that people are skipping those, skipping those, skipping those. If you're not doing B roll on YouTube, if you're not doing Facebook ads, Instagram ads, then you are not putting forth the right type of execution in the right system. I still get so much junk mail. This amazes me how much junk mail I still get discipline and commitment. How committed are you and how disciplined are you? Can you stick with it? Can you stick with it? I, I have always told people that when I put out marketing, I don't expect the return on that, to see the return for three months. For three months. Now, yes, you have some things that go out. You have, it, it's, it's a, hey, you got to take action now. You, you put that action statement in there. Um, hey, you, you go to Coach Rand's, you go to Uncle Rand's Popcorn, and as long as your orders are $20 or more, you get free shipping and free delivery. You put those actions out there. But that, that, that could spread out over time. But then you put it on there. Hey, for one week only, you buy two bags of popcorn. You get one free for one week only. It ends on whatever date that is. You create an immediacy for it. And depending upon your audience, that helps. But for the majority of your marketing, it takes you to touch them, to touch them, to touch them, to touch them, for them to see you, see you, see you, hear you, hear you, hear you, multiple, multiple, multiple times before they finally buy. So you have to understand you have to be committed and disciplined at it and realizing that it's a marathon and not a sprint. Becoming wealthy is a marathon, not a sprint. Do you know how people love 
to jump onto the company that all of a sudden exploded out of nowhere. If you're here in Atlanta, you've probably heard of a company uh, called Slutty Vegan. Slutty Vegan is a young lady who just in September of 2018 started making vegan hamburgers that are delish, if I say so myself. And yes, they are $15 for the burger and the fries. And the fries are oh so good because I love me some fries. From September, she, from that time frame, a month or two later, she got a food truck. Lines were always two, three, four, five hundred people before she even shows up. And then the, they will serve a thousand to two thousand people on one given night. You may wait four or five hours. Some people have waited nine hours. On their grand opening, people waited nine hours when they opened up their first location. People are still in line today. If I went over there today, there's a line that's at least an hour to two hours long. People love to see the meteoric rise of something like that and think that's how it works. I watched the Facebook social media movie and that's how it works. Not paying attention that most businesses take, if a business is successful in 10 years, it's an overnight success. It's an overnight success. If it's a million dollar business in 10 years, it's an overnight success. That's considered an overnight success. 10 years. It's a marathon, it's not a sprint. When you, there's a, a YouTube channel I love called Company Man. He breaks down a lot of information about companies, how they grew, how they failed, what's happened with the company, the ownership. And almost every time the company that you, a company you know so very well, like Starbucks was a company that started 20 years before anybody across the nation heard about it. They first spent 20 years building in that Seattle, that Washington, Portland market before they hit mainstream. 20 years before they went big. 20 years. But people don't pay attention to that. All of a sudden, in the late 90s, Starbucks just burst onto the scene, not realizing they had been around for a couple of decades before that. So we have to realize these things. There is, I don't quote from the Bible that often, <laughs> but, and I try to stay away from these types of, uh, that, this type of literature on business videos, but there is one quote that I've always loved. It's Proverbs 24, 3. It says, by wisdom, a house is built. Through understanding, it is established. Through knowledge, the rooms are filled with rare and beautiful treasures. Whether you look at that esoterically or you look at that literally, I look at it in both ways. Without wisdom, without knowledge, wisdom, and understanding, you will never obtain, obtain the wealth that you desire. You have to have knowledge, wisdom, and understanding to be able to execute on whatever the systems are and to be able to maintain that discipline and understand the marathon and not the sprint. <clears throat> so, even though my program in Financially on Fire is called Stop, Drop, and Roll, it has three major components to it, we're only going to talk about the first one because the first one deals with your personal responsibility. And if you haven't seen my videos on the 70-10-10 plan of how to manage your budget, we'll cover that, very we'll cover that a little bit in here as well. But first, in order for you to have that personal responsibility, to get you into the mindset, you must understand stop. The S stands for stop robbing Peter to pay Paul. That's right. Stop robbing Peter to pay Paul. Stop taking away from your legitimate belongings and in order to pay another party. Stop trying to, uh, uh, stop trying to float checks. And I'm guilty of it. I've done it. I floated checks many a time and got caught. Got caught plenty of times. You know, but really it's something that has to stop. One way of stopping uh, robbing Peter to pay Paul is to understand the 70 10 10 10 plan, meaning that your bills, your mortgage, your rent, your food, your clothing, your utilities, your car note, your insurance, those things should only represent 70% of your income. When I first started doing the 70 10 10 10 plan, I was leveraged at 105%, 100, uh, it was 105% or 112% of my income was needed to pay for all my bills, which meant that I robbed Peter to pay Paul every month. Every month I'm robbing Peter to pay Paul. I'm borrowing money from people that I can't pay back. You know, I'm, at, I'm calling home, mom, I need some money. You know, my brother, I need, I need some money. My sister, I need some money every month until finally I got to where I was 98% leveraged. And then I made that 2% work. 
And I, I put that 2% to work to start a cleaning company. And I worked that night cleaning the office buildings until I was able to get down to that 7% and I start paying off debt, paying off this credit card. I had that Sears credit card when you're young. Had that Sears one. I, I had to pay that off. Um, my wife at the time, she had that visa from her first year in college. Had to pay that off. She had that student loan. Had to pay that off. You know, we had these bills and when I was only making like $1,200 a month. I was only making like $1,200 a month in the Marine Corps. So I wasn't making that much money. But we was robbing Peter to pay Paul left and right until I started. I got us down. Well, we got down. We got down. I say I because she wasn't able to work during those time frame. Um, simply because small military bases, it's not a lot of opportunity to work. So um, I was able to get us down to 98%. And I started working overnight, cleaning up buildings. And then that got us down to about 80%. And then she we was in, got stationed in Germany. She was able to get a job. That extra income dropped us down, you know, to 70%. And then we started, um, we started paying off a bunch of other things. We literally got down to, within, within three years, we got down to 50% of our income. Got down to 50% of our income. And then when we moved to Florida and she wasn't working, it only took us up to uh, right around, right below 70%. So we maintained that 70%. Keeping your bills below 70%. And then we go 10% into your investment account, 10% into your savings, and 10% into your play account. If the seed of savings is not within you, then the seeds of wealth is not within you. So you had to be able to do this program. You got to stop robbing Peter to pay Paul. So you got, that's the first thing. Understand your assets and liability. What's an asset? What's a liability? A house is only an asset when you sell it or it's, being, it's making money. If something's not making money for you, it's not an asset. And so you have to stop lying to yourself. Stop taking, evading your personal responsibility and going to buy cars and clothing and all these things that are just taking money out of your pocket. Spending, not that you can't wear any clothes, don't walk around naked, but what I'm saying is, do you have to buy the $300 pair of shoes? Or can you buy the $100 pair of shoes or the $50 pair of shoes. Now, sometimes you buy the $300 pair of shoes. I'm not going to lie. For my networking, for my going to do classes and seminars, I got the $300 pair of shoes. I got the $1,000 suit. You know, I, it, it is for a reason. But that, although I could have spent less, but I had the funds to do it, the purpose was for the image of when you walk through that door to get that sale or you walk through the door to do that class, to do that seminar, because yes, people have a perceived image of what an intelligent, wealthy person looks like, a person who can teach them. If you don't dress the part, you can't teach me. So it was an investment into my coaching company to do so. Did I want to spend it? Hell no. Could I have went cheaper? Yes. But because of the business I'm going for, it was something I felt that was needed to be done. Uh, give you another example. One of my clients long a while back, real estate agent, very frugal, driving that, that Jetta. And it was an old Jetta. And was wondering why he couldn't break into get people who were trying to sell their houses for $700,000. $700, why he couldn't get them as clients. I mean, he can sell the $150 home left and right. And he was making good money off that, but he wanted to break into the higher echelon, the three hundred, four hundred, five hundred thousand dollars houses. But when he would show up to try to get someone to list with them, they, they always seemed to they loved his attitude, loved his information, but then they always seemed not to, to, to list with him. And then I told him one time, it's that Volkswagen Jetta, it's that crappy car you keep pulling up with. Unfortunately, that's how people see things. So I told him he borrowed his father-in-law's Jaguar a few times and went to go see clients, potential clients. All of a sudden, they want to sell their $500,000 house. Coupled with his intelligence and his, his abilities, they signed with him. So he drove to another client, they signed with him. Drive to another client, they signed with him. He realized that that's just how people are sometimes. And that's the game you have to play. Remember I talked about the game of the wealth, the knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. You just got to execute based on the system. That's the materialistic system we live in. So sometimes you do it. So understand what's an asset, what's a liability. So yes, he bought a Jaguar. Um, and he bought his father-in-law Jaguar, actually. Uh, and, but when you understand assets versus liability, then you, that's how we get to that 70% by understanding these are my liabilities. So what we do is create leverage by having more assets than liability. 
So what you do is write down all your assets, write down all your liabilities, and you see which one you're spending more money on to. And to get your percentage, you do your liabilities divided by your assets equals whatever that number is multiplied by 100. And that'll tell you the percentage of your, um, your current percentage of leverage from assets to liabilities. So you list them all out. This is what, if you're doing my Financially on Fire program, you get a spreadsheet that lists out, that sets you up, that shows you where your money is, your budget, the entire thing. Because if you don't know where your money is and where your money is going, then you're not taking the responsibility to be able to build wealth. We also have to take that responsibility in building that wealth. So that's what we do with Financial Alchemy. The T stands for take the hit. So S. Stop robbing Peter, pay Paul. T, take the hits. You have to understand what hits can you take and how long can you take them and try to avoid bankruptcy at all costs. You may have to take the hit of using a car return program if you got two or three cars. You may take the hit of having to ride public transportation if need be. You may have to take the hit of saying, we can't go on two big vacations this year, but what we can do is three weekend local trips you know within driving distance this year take the hit of not having as much leisure take the hit of not going out to dinner and going out to movies as much and and maybe you have to fire stick it with home cooking you know and take those hits you may have to take the hit of reducing a lot of things and just having to say that we're, we, we got to thug it out as they say we got to thug it out for the next few months or the next year in order to get ourselves in position. You may have to do like a lot of people from other countries. I know a lot of Indian people, they will live with their parents till they're 30, until they're financially set. You may have to thug it out and say, and say, hey, my brother, my sister, my mom, my aunt, I, I need me and my family or just me or me and my, my wife. We can, can we come we, and, and live with y'all, you know, for six months to a year because what we're trying to, and give them the plan. What, what we're looking to do is, save X amount of dollars to be able to put down on a house or put down on property to buy this duplex. We're gonna then live in one side of the duplex and then rent the other side. And then from the cash flow from that, we'll then start to buy other duplexes. And then after a time, we'll be able to move into our own houses because we'll have four or five duplexes that's paying us enough income to be able to allow that income to buy a, a, the single family home that we live in. But we need, we were asking you to give us six months to a year to save that money and, and pay off our debts and build our credit so that we can go get this first investment property. Uh, can we live with you? And, and while we're there, you know, we'll pay the utility bill and we'll pay for half the groceries and, and, and I'll keep the yard clean and, and we'll, we'll keep the house clean. You know, we'll make, we, we make this trade so that we can get standing on our feet. Are you willing to take that hit? Or it, can your pride be swallowed and you take that hit of personal responsibility? Can you say, I made a mistake by stepping to the left, so now I'm gonna step two steps to the right because I stepped to the left and it took me over here. Now I gotta step one step to the right to get me back centered and then I need to take that step to the right to move me in the direction that I desire to move in. Can you take that hit is the question. And how long can you take it? Can you stay there for six months? Can you stay there for a year? Can you stay there for two years? I know uh, uh, of a person close to me and, and, and they moved in with their parents for two years. He moved in with his parents, with his family. His family moved in with his parents for two years because he had you know, gotten married, had a child, stopped going to college, was working, had a decent job. Job that wasn't really going anywhere, so he wanted to get his education, get that degree so that he can move you know, in a different direction. And, and now his family is flourishing. And they've been flourishing for a, a good bit of time. All right. <clears throat> so stop robbing Peter to pay Paul. Take the hit. Oh, open yourself up to new system. Too often we're stuck in old ways. We don't understand the history of money. We don't understand how things are changing. We don't understand that the telephone is the primary source of a people's attention when it comes to business. We don't understand that you know drop shipping is now the way things is working. You order something from a company. That company is just in the middle. It's coming from directly from the warehouse. 
Uh, we, we're not seeing how Amazon is taking over the retail market and, and, and maybe your company has to go online or maybe your company is something that can't still be brick and mortar. We have to un, you know, be open to new system and new ways of doing things. You be, you've been running your checkbook all this time frame, but now maybe you need to get the 10, 10, 70, 10, 10, 10 plan. You need to have that digital budget. You know, you've been, you've been doing it the old way. Now you got to be open to a new way because it's not a sprint. It's not a sprint. It's a marathon. It's ever changing, constantly changing, constantly changing. Once you've adapted to that 70, 10, 10, 10, and then that 10% of your investments is going out there and it's making more money for you. It's making more money for you. All of a sudden that 10%. Is making enough money to keep putting money back into that 10%, but it's also making money. Now, now your household income is high enough, right? Your household income now is high enough that it is now um, at, that, at, that, at that level where it's providing you way more. Now you're living off 50%. Now you're living off 40%. Now you're living off 10%. Now you're at Bill Gates level and you're living off 2%. All right? So in order to get all the way there, you got to be open to new systems. You got to be open to new ways of thinking, new ways of doing things, new actions to take. And that's what I'm showing you with Financially on Fire and Financial Alchemy is new systems, new ways of, of going, of, of moving. And the last one, so we're going to stop robbing Peter to pay Paul, be willing to take the hits, and open ourselves up to new systems. But the last one is P. Peace with your current situation. First, I want you to give gratitude for where you are. If you have a roof over your head, clothes on your back, food in your mouth, you got vid, you got a way to get around, you got a job, or you own a company, first give gratitude. If you got a partner that that I wish I had another person here with me, that I, I can lean on them, and they can lean on me, and we holding each other up because we're leaning so far back that if we didn't have each other, we fall over. But if we if I had somebody, if you got somebody that you can stand with. That's got your back. Give gratitude for that. Don't hold back anything that y'all have in life. Don't hold back anything. I love my brother. I love my sister. I love my mother. I love a lot of people in my family. A lot of my friends. I love them to death. I love them to life. Because they are my family. They are my friends. They are close to me. I only let people really get close to me. The ones I know that if I lean on or if they lean back, I got you. And they got me. And that they don't withhold anything from me and I don't withhold anything from them. That's true friendship. That's true love. So give gratitude for the people that you got that's in your inner circle. Give gratitude for everything that you have because that's vital to your success. So give gratitude first. Stop caring about what other people say even if they're in your inner circle and they disagree with what you're doing. If they think you need to shut your company down, if they think you need to go back to school, if they think you need to get a job in this industry, if they think you need to, to, to do this or do that, but you know that that is not your path, don't care about what they say. Don't care about it. Let them still be your friend. They still got your back just because they don't agree with you. They still got your back, but don't listen. If it's not your path, don't listen. If you know that it does not give you your outcome, remember we talked about that earlier, it does not give you your outcome, don't worry about it. You keep moving. You keep doing you. You keep living your best life. You got to do what's best for you. You got to take that selfish stance and say, this is what's best for me. I know my outcome is to teach and coach. And if people disagree with it, if they say, oh, you got to go do this, you got to go do that, but you ain't did this and you ain't done that and you can't coach on this, you can't coach on that, you know, that's what they say. They are not me. I and I myself. <laughs> I know that was horrible, but I'm going to say it that way anyway. Uh, and then stop caring about what the outside world thinks. Who cares about the outside world? What do people outside my window have to do with my greatness? Nothing. The people outside your circle are the ones who will try to stop you over and over again. And if we listen to that conditioning of our religion, of our culture, of our family, of our government, of all these things, if we listen to that conditioning, we are no more, we, 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 we get trapped like the elephant at the circus. 
You guys may know the story, the, the teaching of how an elephant, when he's brought in as a baby at a circus, they, they put this, the rope around his leg, drive a stake in, and at that age, the, the elephant can't pull the stake out. It can't move it out. And they keep doing it. Well, after a while, the elephant stops trying. It stops trying. But then as the elephant grows and gets bigger and gets stronger, they drive that same stake into the ground. They put that same rope on the elephant. But the conditioning has the elephant where he doesn't even try. Can easily pull that pin, but does not. And the times that it do happen, it's because something very traumatic happened. Do not wait until you get to your pain point in order for you to realize that you can pull that stake of conditioning out of the ground. So you can pull that poverty out of the ground. That you can pull all that insecurities and inconsistencies out of the ground. Don't wait for you to be damn near bankrupt to say, I now got to start managing my money better. Uh, Coach Renz had taught me about that 70-10-10-10 plan, but uh, you know what? I've waited till my situation has gotten so such an emergency that now I can't do it. No, do it now. Do it now. If you got breathing room, do it now. If you don't have breathing room, do it now so that you can at least look up a little bit. I can't tell you how many times I've been down deep in a hole. Down deep in a financial hole. Made a decision uh, uh, with my company five, six years ago. It plummeted me into a hole. Climbing out, climbing out, climbing out. I refused to let the condition keep me down. Climbing out, climbing out. I finally got one hand above the lip, above ground. I can barely peek over and I can barely see. But conditioning will make me fall back down. But because I can barely see, I know I just got to throw that other arm up and pull myself completely out. That's If you're in that state, pull yourself completely out. Stop robbing Peter to pay Paul. Take those hits. Open yourself up to new situation, new system, and find peace with where you are and give gratitude. Take the personal responsibility of getting the 70, 10, 10, 10 plan, stacking and getting your budget correct so you can see where you are and start saying that, okay, we spent too much money. Maybe we, okay, when this lease is up, we have to downgrade. This house, this mortgage is too high. We need to downgrade. We need to sell the house and downgrade. We got three cars. We need to get rid of one. Sell one and have just two. We got to take public transportation. We got to do whatever we have to do. But let's get this done. Oh, and we are having struggles at doing it. Let's call Coach Renz. Let's get on the financial alchemy program so that we can start moving in the right direction. I can't think of different ways to get out of this situation. I can't think of investments. And matter of fact, even if I could, I need that coach. I need that help to say that, is this a good investment? Is this a pathway I can take? How can I get to the point? What I really want to be is a real estate investor. How do I get there? What I really want to do is open up a, a, a store, a convenience store. How do I get there? I want to open up this business or that business. How do I get there? And matter of fact, I don't want to get there by struggle. I want to get there by somebody who's already been through the struggle and can then teach me the steps to take to minimize how much I'm going to struggle, who can show me how to do the marketing, who can show me how to pick the location, who can show me how to target my market, who can show me how, whether or not, is this a good viable business to get involved in? One of the biggest things that hamper most people, and it hampered me until, uh, until 2006, is that people don't want to pay for coaching. They don't want to pay for that guidance. They want it to be free. But bringing a coach in in 2006 made the biggest difference in my life. And I still am feeding off that knowledge that I got from 2006 to 2010 from my coach. 2006 to 2010, my business coach took me farther than any book that I had ever read because it was real time and it was right there with me and it was directly related to my condition, to my movements, to what I was trying, what I was looking to do. And I built a successful fitness company that I later sold based on having that coach. And then, yes, I made a mistake some years later in a business, but you know what? My recovery has come because I reached back and I said, hey coach, I need you for six months. I need you for six months. I don't care what the fee is. I need you for six months. And I got that six months and I've been climbing out and I climbed out. Now I'm pulling myself. Now I've pulled myself above ground where I can see. The biggest hindrance is people not wanting to do that. They want everything free. They want to read a book. 
that gives you vague information. You need the details. They say the devil is in the detail. No, success is in the detail. Heaven is in the detail. So either you can get into your comfortable hell or you can come into your unfamiliar heaven. It's up to you. But I'm your coach and I'm here for you. So watch these other videos and I appreciate you guys being here. And remember always, you have to free yourself to be yourself because your greatness is non-negotiable.